Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly livestock market updates. I'm Brownfield anchor reporter Megan Grebner. With us, as always, is University of Missouri Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. Uh, kind of a quick week for us this week as we get in uh, to talk about uh, really uh, more on the demand side of things this week. Let's kick things off and recap what happened this week in the markets. Now, if we start on the cattle side, uh, it's a lower week uh, for, for cattle this week with fed cattle uh, down 50 cents this week. Those feeder cattle auctions were anywhere from steady to $5 lower on the week. On the future side, June live cattle features were up a dime, uh, while the August uh, feeder cattle features contract closed down $2.10 this week. That was as uh, July corn features rose nearly 60 cents again this week. Uh, the choice box beef price up $11.75 on strength across the board and all those components. Uh, on the hog side, cash bail and goat prices were up a dollar and a quarter this week. June lean hog futures contract was uh, strongly up $3.25. The pork cutout value gained nearly $4 this week. Strength in uh, ribs and, and bellies really led the way there. As we take a look at those numbers, obviously, uh, we talk about higher prices, but I don't think we can talk about higher prices without talking a little bit too about higher inputs as well, which leads us to what I think is the theme of, of uh, 2021 risk management and protection. Uh, what are some things that producers need to be considering as we're watching these market uh, prices go higher for the most yeah, part? So I think certainly for hogs, you know, that there's an opportunity when, when we're, we're feeding $7 corn in some cases uh, today, the, the ability to lock in some uh, very high hog prices, at least high relative to historical standards, uh, it gives us an opportunity here. Uh, I, I do worry there's some downside risk still in these uh, hog prices that uh, could catch producers, especially if we're going to continue to feed $7 corn for the rest of the year. Now, we don't know that yet, but uh, uh, I, I don't want to have to bet on the weather side very much. So just taking advantage of those opportunities, I don't think it's a bad strategy. Again, uh, I, this is not an all or none for me, but uh, thinking about what, what part of that production you want to let someone else own, essentially, uh, it's, it's probably not a bad uh, uh, situation for hog folks. On the cattle side, you know, we're a little late here to have much discussion on cattle prices given we've been moving lower of late. Um, but uh, hogs certainly off, offer some opportunities. Do we also, if we're producers, need to think about, are we getting to a point with corn price where it is that we need to consider maybe some alternative feed ingredients or, or, or trying to maybe get creative with our uh, bottom line as well? So perhaps, um, you know, all, all these feedstuffs have been moving higher. Uh, I, I would certainly want to push a pencil right now to see if there are some opportunities to switch around. Uh, however, I always say the last thing you want to do is to affect feed efficiency too much, uh, chasing that lower priced ration. So there's, there, there's some fine line here not to cross in terms of uh, how willing am I to go for a cheaper ration. Uh, if, if I cut feed efficiency too much, I've lost any of the gain that I had. So I think it depends on operation to operation, but uh, it's, it's worth taking a look at where we sit today. All right, let's talk weekly slaughter numbers. It's getting interesting uh, as we start to look at year over year comparisons, but let's talk about what slaughter numbers and how processing has gone this week. Yeah, on the cattle side, USDA estimating for the week uh, ending May 8th, 638,000 head of cattle. That's actually 11,000 below where we were a week ago, uh, but uh, 162,000 head above where we were a year ago. So we're sitting here in the last couple of weeks with what will be the bottom in terms of uh, weekly slaughter uh, back in 2020 due to COVID-19. On the hog side, um, USDA estimating 2.408 million head of hogs to be slaughtered this week. That's down 46,000 head uh, relative to a week ago, but up 604,000 head relative to a year ago. And, and just to give us a little more perspective here, year to date, cattle slaughter up 4.8%, hog slaughter up 1.3%. Now, I think we'll start to narrow that back up again as, as we uh, uh, start to see 2020 numbers come back. But uh, if you remember, we were starting, especially on the hog side, 
uh, well below year ago levels. So we've, we've caught up pretty quickly uh, given the slowdown that we saw in 2020. Now let's talk monthly trade data as we take a look at those numbers. Uh, how do things look and how do things shake, shape up for beef and pork? Yeah, so some good news in terms of what we got out of uh, monthly trade data this, uh, this week. Uh, on the beef side, beef exports uh, up 12.3% in March of this year relative to a year ago, uh, led by the blistering uh, pace to China Hong Kong, Taiwan of, of up 139% uh, relative to a year ago for, for March of this year. Um, year to date, uh, beef exports are up 3.5%. And again, that's, that's led by what's been happening to China up 77%. Um, we did see some uh, growth to Korea this, this uh, month in those numbers. So uh, some other countries as well, but uh, China led the way uh, on, on that report. On the pork side, uh, pork exports for March of 21 came in 3.9% above year ago levels. Um, that was driven uh, in part by what was going to Japan. That was up 13%. But then we had a number of other uh, newer destinations for U.S. pork exports that also expanded uh, in this March report that uh, le led to the higher numbers that we have. Now, if you look year to date, uh, pork exports uh, down 4.8%. That's led almost entirely by the 23% decline in year-to-date China numbers. How important is us for, or important is it for us to continue to explore some of these up-and-coming markets or increase access uh, to other markets for pork and beef uh, as well? Yeah, so if we want to keep growing our domestic industry, um, I, I think exports is where this all is at. I, I sometimes like to describe growing exports is like getting on the treadmill. You don't want to get off. You can't stop growing those or you end up with an industry on the supply side that also has to quit growing. So some of these other countries that we don't typically talk about, not in our top five, uh, seeing the growth there is, is uh, hopeful. Uh, in terms of where we go longer term. I also add, you know, you and I talk risk management all the time. Having more countries available uh, to export U.S. pork, that's a risk management strategy. Um, at least none of them, you know, if one were to sit on the sideline, uh, we, we have other options available to us. So it, it's important to continue to grow the list of countries interested in U.S. beef and pork both. And that also helps us to not have rely on us domestically to increase our consumption here as well if we're sending more product uh, to other parts of the world. That's right. And, you know, you look at pork in particular, per capita pork consumption in this country is at the high end relative to historical standards. I'm not saying we can't grow it, and I'm not saying population won't grow in this country, but we're, we're talking about incremental growth in terms of domestic use in this country, even with strong demand. And, and so it's, it's those other countries that I think can really help us continue to grow at a more rapid rate, uh, U.S. production in this country. Scott Dobbs' report came out today, and I would say less than stellar numbers uh, when we look at those. Yeah, that's, that's correct. You know, we, uh, we, we only added 266,000 new jobs uh, in, in April, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That was far below what some were expecting to be as many as 2 million new jobs to be added. Uh, we also got revisions in the March data that dropped about 140,000 jobs out of it. Uh, you add all this stuff together and, and we had a slight uptick in the unemployment rate to 6.1%. Uh, so maybe not the best news, uh, especially as we were probably pushing a lot of stimulus dollars out there uh, that, that we didn't get a little more job growth. When we look at that, I mean, that comes back, obviously, to our demand potential and consumer relation side of things. Uh, how critical is it going to be for us moving forward to, as we start to reopen more, we start to see more vaccines, we start to see those lacks that, uh, some of those restrictions lacks that we have income to be able to put back in the economy and help it in return grow and, and continue recovery? Yeah, so I think it's critical. Um, I, I sometimes like to, to take this chance to talk about 
we need more workers. Uh, and, and I talk about that from farm to retail. Um, I, I worry we're going to have a big surge of demand as we continue to come out of uh, some of the COVID-19 restrictions. And we're gonna, we potentially are going to have trouble filling that demand surge. Now, that gives us higher prices at the retail level. What it does all the way back at the farm level might be a different story. And, and so uh, these, this cost escalation that I, I begin to see more signs of worries me as we look from farm to retail and uh, we, we need to continue to create uh, new jobs, more workers to, to try to keep those costs in, in better check. Matt, that'll do it for us this week <laughs> for reports as we look ahead to next week. Uh, what are we watching? Well, we'll get another uh, monthly report from USDA next week. The WASDE will be out. Uh, we'll also get retail prices. And we finish next week with consumer sentiment. All right. Have a great weekend. We will talk to you next Friday. Sounds great, Megan. We have our weekly livestock market update delivered to your email box every Saturday morning. Visit our website, brownfieldagnews.com. You can also check out some of the really great Brownfield podcasts at brownfieldagnews.com slash podcast. Have a great weekend. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.